Hey, good morning, good afternoon, Facebook family. Welcome to another episode of Marriage Mondays with Nick and Trina Branson. And tonight we're going to talk about tips for effective forgiveness. So, you know, this goes along the lines of what we've been talking about for the last couple mm -hmm. of weeks. And we think this is one of the things that's very important that to have a, a good relationship when you're, when you're dealing with uh, your spouse. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and tag some folks um, and get start sharing? So look at Mandy Brantley, the first person on. Oh, good <laughs> job, Mandy. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, along with other folks. There's somebody else. I just can't see who it is. It's, oh, it's not you yet, is it? No. Okay. So, um we do want you to go ahead and um, share this information um, with anybody that you think can benefit from it. Um, just for those that may be seeing this for the first time um, and those that are joining us today, we just want to say that we do come to you um, representing our church ministry, which is Crown Kingdom um, Cultural Center. Um, and so we are... Um, Pastor is Bishop Founders Bruce Jr., um, along with his wife, who lead us, um, and they have given us um, this platform to share with you guys. So we are the marriage ministry directors at our church. We are not licensed marriage counselors, so we don't want to um, misrepresent ourselves in that way. We're just basically um, marriage ministry directors. We coach people along. We've done that for years probably over 20 years at this point i guess yep at least that yeah being on a team we haven't always been in that coaching position but we've always um over the years we've done quite a bit of work uh in the church setting with couples uh working on marriage we started with our own um uh, just wanting to know how to uh make it a good marriage from the time we were young so and that has helped sustain us we've had lots of bumps and bruises along the way um, and that's what we are here for is to share those experiences with you, to share the word of God with you, um, and hopefully help you because marriage is a journey. It takes work. Um, it's a good thing. It's a great thing, but, um, it does require work. No marriage gets to be a great marriage without work. Some work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good bit of work. All right. So we got Jeannie Smith. I saw Emma Denny. Um, can't see who else, but we're happy to have you ladies on with us tonight. Um, so we talked about resentment last week, right? No, we talked about resentment, then we talked about ways to apologize, uh, languages of apology, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of still staying within that vein um, because forgiveness is such an important concept within marriage. There will be some offenses in marriage. It must come. It, it absolutely will. You will offend your spouse. Your spouse will offend you. And that can be anything from something minor as in you just ran over my toe with this rolly chair, which he didn't, but it does happen sometimes, y'all. Um, and maybe I was, could be a little offended by that or at least feel like I was wronged. So sometimes apologies needed on that level all the way to something really large as in, you know, you mishandled my trust or you mishandled um our finances something of that magnitude um that really requires uh, a large level of um forgiveness or at least some type of confrontation so regardless of how that issue gets resolved forgiveness is always an option to be considered so we want to talk a little bit tonight about some very practical tips to make that forgiveness process effective right all right. So with that said, um, forgiveness not only hurts your heart. I mean, forgiveness not only heals your heart, but it also heals your relationship. I mean, it's one of those things that you need in your marriage to make the marriage continue to work. Yeah. Because, you know, that's where if you don't if you don't have the, the ability to forgive, that's where you build up the resentment, the bitterness, yeah. the, the all the stuff that, that makes you. Uh, what a lot of people say, fall out of love with your partner. You don't. You you just feel like I don't love this person anymore because you don't feel like they got your best interest in mind, or they've just hurt you so many times that you don't want to get hurt anymore. And people don't like to be around people that hurt them. 
You know, that's, that's just not what we do as humans. Mm-hmm. You get away from people that try to hurt you. So that's why I think some marriages end quickly because those skills are not there. You know, that skill of, of going to God and say, help me to relieve this or just help me to, to see past the bitterness um, and, and get on with, with living with one another. Yeah. Because like she said, the, 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 the offenses will come. Whether small or big, they they will happen. But you got to learn to get past those things as a married couple. And that's sometimes easier said than done. We right. Don't, we don't want to make light of it. But in all honesty, sometimes we hold back the gift of forgiveness to our spouse for a variety of reasons. And so uh, we do want you to be able to understand just how important that forgiveness is and not look at it as something that is optional. It's something that's necessary. When you are, um, when you consider yourself a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, forgiveness is at the very core of that relationship. Your relationship with um, God begins at the point of your having faith that God can forgive you for what you've done against him. We're born into sin, Mm -hmm. you know, and so we already are born into a state of offense or some kind of conflict with God. And so we have, uh, it is necessary for us to go to God for forgiveness. And he is always ready to forgive us quickly. And that's a characteristic or a trait of God. And it's up to us to take that trait on as children, as his children. It's right. important for us to learn to forgive swiftly. Hey, Sister Sarah Gordon. Always love for her to join in with us. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, let's just talk about this. Forgiveness is a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. It's not a feeling. You know, it's not something that's going to come and go real easy. When you, when I mean, real, it's not easy to give somebody. Forgiveness is a choice and not a feeling. It's not a feeling like I love you or I'm mad. Forgiveness is one of those things that takes a process to get through. Sometimes. And, like, and you say it's, like, it's not easy. And that well, process is not easy all the time. Well, sometimes, it's not, sometimes it is easy to forgive somebody. Right. I mean, I, I understand that. But you don't want to be in a position where thinking that every time somebody do something to you that that process is going to be that easy. Right. Or it's going to be that easy for you. Yeah. It's the tough times that take some skills to get through. So when, we, when you, you have to make a decision... To forgive somebody and the process to get through it is not that easy. And forgiveness is an act of of wiping away and pardoning or foregoing a debt. That's what forgiveness is. So most of us, when we have debt and like we're, we have debt with this house, Mm -hmm. you know, it takes certain amount of payments to make that debt go away um, for us. Now, some people got the kind of money to just say, I'm going to pay this house off in one shot. And see, that's kind of how forgiveness works. If you got enough, you know, maturity in you to say, okay, we're just going to forgive that and I'm done, then it can be done. But sometimes it takes little increments of, sort of. of going through mm-hmm. and getting through that, that forgiveness. And then eventually it will go away mm-hmm. for that. Okay. That's a good example. Right. Um, and I will say it, it really starts in your mind, you making that decision um, that you even want to forgive or that you want to be obedient to God enough for you to move towards forgiveness. And sometimes that's what it is. It's just out of obedience to God. Okay, because I love God mm-hmm. and because I want to be in good standing with God, mm-hmm. I'm not going to let this unforgiveness come between me and God because as his child, he does expect me to forgive, which means... He got to help me with this if it's a difficult thing to forgive. Because every morning, you know, we get grace and mercy every morning. Mm-hmm. And that's an act of for God for giving us on a daily basis yeah. for the things that mercy. we've done. So, you know, because forgiveness can act like that for you, too. It's an act of giving somebody grace and mercy, but through love. Mm-hmm. Everything you do in forgiveness has to be done in love. Or when we get down to another point, we're going to talk about it, it'll, it'll keep occurring in your mind. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'll throw this in too. Is I think forgiveness is empowering. To who? To the person who is doing the forgiving. Okay. 
So, for example, um, if you offend me and I have been wronged, I have a right to sulk and be mad and to stew in it. But what that does is it does more damage to me. It takes so much energy to be mad and to hold on to that um, that feeling of anger and frustration mm -hmm. and contempt for the other person. To me, that takes a lot of energy um, over and over and over again. Instead of just using the energy one time to say, okay, I don't really want to, but I'm going to do this because I have to muster up what I got. Mm -hmm. And say, you know what? I forgive you. I recognize you're human. You are human. And right. humans make mistakes. You messed up. But I do forgive you. That frees me up. It does. It doesn't absolve you of everything that might be associated with what you, what you did. But it tells me and it tells you that I'm not going to continue to spend my energy towards having negative uh, emotions toward you about whatever offense you, uh, you know, traded upon me with. Right. So it's freeing for me. It's what I'm saying. I don't have to hold on to it because I've been mad about something and maybe we hadn't quite cleared it up. And for me, I forget that I'm supposed to be mad. And then sometimes I'm just, I just don't hold grudges. That's right. kind of never been who I, who I am. I'm not generally. I don't not saying I don't ever, but mm -hmm. I, and so sometimes I forget that I'm supposed to be mad and then I got to remind myself, okay, he's not my friend right now. I'm not going <laughs> to, we're not friends right now. It takes too much energy. I just rather not have that because once again, you know, you don't really want to be around um, other people mm -hmm. that if you have that problem with, you know, that contention between the two of you. Mm -hmm. You know, but on the other hand, you're my spouse. I'm, I might want to be around you for a bit. So I don't want to have to hold on to that thing that's not cleared up. It just takes so much energy. Yeah, we used to spend a little bit. I did spend a little bit of time being mad and resentful uh, in ways where I'll be like, I'm not even talking to her. I'm going to do my best to avoid her. And I'm not going to talk to her. So you put your energy mm -hmm. towards being angry. And being resentful. But after a while, like you say, we be around so, each other so much, you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. At some point, I'm going to have to talk to this lady. And stop being mad and resentful. Because there was no production in it. It stopped the production of relationship. It stopped going forward in, in marriage and in love and all that kind of stuff. Things that we should have been past because I'm not talking to her because I don't want to. Because she done offended me. She done said something, you know, crazy to me and I don't like it. I done done something. I'm not going to say anything. But that was non-productive. So, you know, that's a one reason to really to get, you know, past forgiveness. And sometimes um, you got to, to share your hurt. And the reason I say you got to share your hurt because I may have offended you and not even knew it. Right. And you walking around with an offense and resentment towards me, and I don't know what's going on. Or the partner don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So you gotta learn how to tell somebody, okay, that you know that that hurt me now. That you hurt my feelings when you did that. And if they if they know it, then there may be a process of, of, of apology so you can get on with your with your with your marriage and with your relationship. But if they don't know, they don't know. You can't hold them responsible for something that they don't know. Right. See, that goes back to communication skills, mm -hmm. being able to have those tough co confrontations with your spouse, but having it in a productive way. So the purpose is not, you know, I'm mad at you and I want to argue about it. It's I need to express to you how, what, how I feel based upon what you did. Mm -hmm. And that's a different approach rather than to... Uh, be passive aggressive right. or to be openly overt and aggressive but you know to come with somebody with the uh, disposition that's calm and that's looking for a solution that's a whole nother disposition and that's going to get you a different response than to come to someone spewing anger or looking for revenge mm -hmm. it's get a back. different mindset right. yeah it's a different it's mindset and forgiveness gets gets you to that point. If you decide at the point of offense, um, you know, that you have something you want to let your spouse know that offended you, 
but you also have made that decision that you are going to forgive them, it cuts down on the tension and the confrontation. It makes it more productive and more pleasant. You're both then working towards the same goal. It's right. not just you trying to inform your partner that they offended you, but you're informing them and you're forgiving them, which gets you to a solution faster. Right. And when you come to that point of forgiveness, like my wife was saying just then, at that point, you need to make a plan. A plan to to, to do something. Um, restitution. Yeah, restitution. To do something for that person to make sure that, or to be as sure as you can, that this doesn't happen again to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. Your human nature may kick in again and you may trip and fall and, and do something again. But as soon as you have violated that boundary, you need to be trying to do something to make amends. Yeah, for that. Because that. that's really part of human nature is we do tend to, um, uh, very often humans can have the tendency to have the same flaws or right. the same proclivities or, you know, kind of for behaviors to repeat unless we're smart enough and wise enough and mature enough to intervene before we make that same offense again. Right. And like I said before, that can be something minor as in... Uh, I ain't gonna say leaving the toilet seat up. We're gonna skip that this time. But as in, um, not opening the door for your wife if that's something she expects or something you normally do, all the way up to uh, infidelity. Right. So you don't want to keep having that repeat offense coming up over and over in your relationship, and you guys not have um, you not be able to monitor yourself so as to not offend your spouse in that mm -hmm. same way again. You've got to be mature enough and honest enough with yourself to know, well, you know, I can't go to certain places or spend time with certain people if that's going to lead me to a place that's bad for my marriage right. or a place of offense towards my spouse. Mm -hmm. And even in, in, in talking about that, um, thinking about the offenses, at, at some point you got to quit replaying the situation in your mind, you know, quit rehearsing because your mind will go back to that to that offense. And when your mind go back to it, if something happens even close to it, it's going to be like, I've done that plus this. Because your mind has made the new situation like Attached the old. The old. Mm -hmm. And it's all going to seem like, it's going to be seem like, okay, you done hurt me twice just as bad. Well, and if you look at 1 Corinthians where the Bible talks about it, it's the love chapter. You know? mm -hmm. And it says that love does not keep an account of what's wrong so it's important for you to insert love when you're in that process of forgiveness and just to be able to um, wipe the slate clean and not to hold on and start keeping count of those offenses right. um, if they are repeating then you do have to deal with them you know but what you don't want to do is go back and rehash all oh, that's when you start getting into that point of resentment that we talked mm -hmm. about last week so and it honestly it takes the help of god to get through some of this stuff it does it really does because it, it's easy for it to build up i think it's human nature for us to keep count um or you know to hold on to all those past things like oh i haven't forgotten right. i forgave but i didn't forget and um, I've never quite understood or quite had a full understanding of or accepted um, forgive and forget. Sometimes to me, it just seems natural to forgive and forget. But other times it's more difficult to forget. And sometimes I don't want to forget. I just kind of need to reframe it so that I don't have those same negative emotions attached to it. But forgetting is not necessarily... Um, the best thing to do. So like I said, I've never quite grasped that concept of forgive and forget. Uh, it just seems like you got to use some wisdom along with that. So I don't know. Y'all might can give me some insight. Well, the thing about forgetting is, you know, it's, it, it takes time. It's about like you got to make more good memories That's on something in order to, to not let it have that same st Sting yeah. it had before. Yeah, that's true. I can go with that because yeah. we've had some things happen, and um, you might bring it, bring up something that happened that you've done before, and I'm like, I don't even remember that. No, I don't even. Um, yeah, you did yeah. that for real, but well, at I the mean, time it, just, it seemed a big. It may have seemed big, right. you know, but uh, over time, um, you know, once you forgive it and, and truly move on from it, 
Um, I mean, it just, maybe we've been married long enough to get to that point. I'm right. sure that wasn't the case early on. Mm -hmm. But 20, what, 22, 23 years in, I, I can't remember everything I've done to you or everything you've done to me. And I don't spend time rehearsing it. No. And my thing is, I always try to create something new in your marriage. Create some doing something yeah. new. Because with new memories, you know, because even with new memories, that helps to to buffer some of the old stuff that happened. It does. Happened. It does. It really does. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and one thing that uh, we don't want to push past is with this right here, with this forgive and with, with the notion of forgetting is that, and we just really started talking about it. It takes time. Yeah. This take this is the process. It takes time to 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 forgive something, especially how big it is to that person. It, it's going to take time to get mm -hmm. over some offenses. Mm -hmm. You know, it it is. You know, there's no way around it. It's you know, for infidelity, infidelity may not take somebody long to get over. It may not. I don't know about that. But for it. You know, you know somebody I, like that. I've, I've met some some people like that. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just don't. They just, or is they it that they don't it. share the hurt that they they just act like it don't hurt them? They, I, I'm gonna say that. But that's they not act like thing. they don't. You know, okay, it happened. You know, let's build and get past this. And I'm thinking to myself, whew, they tougher than me. <laughs> Boy, they way they way tougher that's than me. That's a tough one. The infidelity. But honestly, I have seen people overcome infidelity. Um, nobody that I know of firsthand that has overcome infidelity, nobody's ever said that it was easy, though. I mean, it had to be very intentional, and usually it's a, a pretty significant process, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. I, I really have seen people, like, totally um, come out of that hard place and actually be stronger and move forward in the long run with a better relationship. Um, but forgiveness is definitely a part of that process. And one thing that I've um, I've heard um, a situation where it's, uh, it's his name is DJ Envy and his wife. They wrote a book on the process they had to go through to get past some of the things that he did to her. Okay. And you know they went through a process. And the one thing that he mentioned in that book is I think is a very good point you know i'm not promoting the book or whatever but he said he did not try to push her past the time she needed in order to fully forgive him okay you can't you know, rush he didn't process. rush it right okay and whatever she had to to say and whatever they had to go through to make it work he was willing to to go through so if you if you hurt whether you're man or female male or female you can't push your spouse past or make them forgive you quicker because Amazing. there's a process that has to happen in order for that total forgiveness to happen. Because if you push them too quick, your relationship might not be what you need it to be in order for both of y'all to grow. It could be a mess. I, I imagine that would be pretty upsetting. If you offended me and then you want to tell me mm -hmm. when when I should be over it. Mm, yeah, that, we one, that wouldn't go well. And you know, one example that they use, like, you know, it's been two years. You should have been done forgetting that by now. It's, it's yeah, no. you don't get to decide how deep that hurt is or, or how much it takes yep, and to I, heal. And I know, you know, I got some friends that's kind of suffering from those decisions, decisions they mm -hmm. made with that. So, yeah, it's been Yeah, some people never process, get over it, but that forgiveness is for you. I, I tell you, it's, it's a hard thing to hold on to that bitterness. And that it's like, uh, I've used, heard the analogy used where unforgiveness is like you drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. And right. I think that's very true. What did uh, Elder Emma Danny say? She said, when we confess our sins, God forgives us. That's and right. remembers our remembers our sins no more. So I believe that when we forgive, we forget that sting oh, of hurt. But okay. it does take time. Okay. We are first nature, then spiritual. Now what a mighty mean. God. We are, we are first natural, then spiritual. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you. Yeah, Thank that's you. good. Yeah, we needed that um, 
uh, insight, Elder Denny. That's what mm -hmm. the elders are for. It is. Bringing that wisdom. So, yeah, that's exactly right. And that's kind of how we started off is saying that God forgives us all. The very foundation of our relationship with God is based upon forgiveness. And thank God he does not hold against us all the stuff we do to offend him on a daily basis. So, um, if you wise, you ask forgiveness from God on a regular basis because... Mm -hmm. Uh, we're constantly um, needing a clean slate. We need a clean slate. So thank God for grace. Mercies are new every morning, and we need them. You do sure do. We need them. Make today better than the, the day before. But um, yeah, forgiveness is a part of our life as Christians. We have to embrace that and uh, let it work in our favor. Hmm. Were we on last week? We were. Yeah. Okay. Talking about the language of apology. That's right. Okay. I get me. So we do have a Monday in October that's going to be awful. We'll let y'all know. Isn't that a holiday? Hmm. We're not going to be on that holiday. We're not going to be on that holiday. It's Indigenous People's Day. Yes, we are. Indigenous people. It's a holiday. We have. We may have some plans. We'll work it out. Okay. I didn't think about Indigenous People's Day. That's a new one on me. Facebook family, well, you know, wanna... it used to be Columbus Day. Oh. Yeah, Columbus. And, and I guess it still is Columbus Day. But um, it's, it's very hard to justify having discovered something when there's already millions of people there. So, you know, just a little food for thought. The indigenous people were already there. <laughs> and I hate to call them Indians because they are not from India. That was a misnomer from the beginning. But have that discussion. Oh, That's a whole nother. Um, we talking about forgiveness, so we gotta forgive those people that. That's exactly misinterpreted right. all that's of that. A, yeah, that's a, actually a really big uh, issue, particularly in the black community. We have a lot of room um, to consider forgiveness. Oh, no doubt. We do. That's that's but we interesting. Love. That we love. We gonna love you one way or the other. We gonna love you. Yeah. So all right. Well, we're gonna um, let y'all go. Yeah. We we'll appreciate your time today. We'll be back next week, 7 o'clock Monday night. For those of you that can join us live, we always appreciate that. Um, if not, we hope you enjoy the recording. Continue to send it on out there in the world. Let as many people enjoy it as possible. You never know whose marriage you can truly help by just sharing, uh, you know, clicking a video to share with somebody else. So help strengthen somebody else's relationship. So, yep, thank y'all for joining us. But that said, from the lady and the coach, we love y'all. Good night.